If you work with circular knitting machines, you're probably very familiar with the tube setting. So when you're on tube setting, you're knitting in the round. So you're doing a complete circle using all the pins on your machine. This is how you get those beanies or circular items. And it's a really beginner friendly and easy approach to using your circular knitting machine. But you don't have to actually use it on the tube setting. You can create small panels. You can also create large panels without going all the way around. And this is super useful if you are making clothing items, which I do quite often, um, or if you need to make straps or chains for a project. So there are tools out there such as an I-cord maker that you can use. You can also hand crochet, which is what I typically do, but you can also use this panel setting. Um, in fact, you don't even have to use panel setting. You're just going to use less pins than circular knitting, and you can create something that looks similar to this. This first sample right here, this is really cool because it's like a chain. So if you're looking for just like maybe a skinny strap for a top, you can easily make this with just two pins. If you're looking for something a little bit bigger, this is actually made with just three pins. And this is what we're going to do today. I need to make some straps for a bag I'm working on and I want my straps to be this big. So we're just going to use three of our pins today and I'm going to show you some tips on how to work with panels. First thing to take note, if you are not going to be using the full panels all the way around, you really don't need to change your setting. So on your machines over here on the right, you typically have an option to change it from tube to panel setting. If you're only gonna use a couple of pins, you do not even have to mess with this. Um, so I leave that over here alone. Also, if you're working with panels that are smaller, that you don't have to come anywhere near the first or last pins, I say don't go near them because here your machine is actually hooked up to your counter and it is going to get stuck a little bit as you go back and forth. So for ease of use, I do recommend just going about halfway through um, so that you don't have any of those beginning or end pins anywhere near you and this will make your life so much easier. I really like the idea of uh, and when you're first trying to learn panels doing something small like this because it gives you an opportunity to really practice and if you make a mistake it's really easy to remove. So this is a great way to make your way into working with panels. For this particular panel project, the straps, we do not even need to use waste yarn. So that is great news. When you have these really small panels like this, you there really isn't a need for it because there's only really whatever you're using two or three pins. So we will not be using waste yarn, but how to start the panel. So you need to decide which of these pins over here you want to use just to hold your working yarn. That's what we're going to do. We're just holding it in place. And then however many pins you want to use for your project is what how many you're going to cast on. So in this case, I'm going to be casting on to three pins. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my yarn tail and I'm going to make it a little bit longer so it hits the bottom of the table just so it doesn't accidentally slip out. And this right here is just going to be my holder. Okay. Then I'm going to cast on just as I would with a tube setting. So I'm going to go behind this pin. That's number one in front of this pin. That's number two and behind this pin. And that's number three. So one, two, three, these are the three pins that I will be making this strap out of. Now, a couple of important things to keep in mind when you're working with panels. Number one, in order for this side over here to work properly, you have to continue to knit until that, boop, that little yarn goes right under the bumper here. And it may look a little weird to you because you're so far over here to the left, but we're just concerned with getting that working yarn under this bumper here. And again, this is the bumper on the outside of our third pin. We're gonna stick it in our yarn guide and now we're going to go back the other direction. So this is where things are different. We're not going in a circle. We're going back and forth. All right, now I want to show you what is going on with my hand because this is a huge piece of working with panels. So you will be holding on to the yarn for a good portion of the project. In fact, for most of the project because you need to provide adequate tension. So we just had that go right onto our bumper here. Again, one, two, three. So now we're going to hold on to our yarn and we're going to go the opposite direction. 
Once your yarn, okay, once this working yarn gets back to that same bumper, you're going to give it even tension. So you're going to be pulling on it just a little bit so that you don't get a really loose loop right there. So you're going to hold on to this, gently pull it while you knit one, two, three. Again, just because we're doing three, three pins. So we're going to hold on. I'm going slowly to show you. You want to watch right here. As soon as it goes under, you can give it a little bit of tension, just give it a little bit of a pull. And then we knit one, we knit two, we knit three. Then just like we did on the far left hand side, we need to go past the last bumper. So again, watch right here. We're gonna keep knitting, boop, until the working yarn falls under that bumper there. So we just did two rows in our panel. So now, Again, holding onto the yarn with our hand here, we're gonna go back the opposite direction again, pulling on that yarn to give it tension until it goes under the bumper. Now, because this is such a small panel, you will be holding onto this yarn pretty much the whole time. So let's go slow again. You're watching right here. We're holding onto that yarn and then giving it just a little tiny tuck. Then we're gonna knit through all three until this goes under the bumper, done. Then we're gonna go back again. And if it gets stuck, which it does quite often, just make sure that you push those loops all the way to the bottom as you work with your panels. Now your cast on thread, doesn't matter. It's gonna fall. It has nothing to do with this. It's fine, just let it go. And we're going to continue back and forth. Now, as you start to get more comfortable with your panels, you can actually speed up the process. Just making sure that you pop those loops down on both ends. Again, just as a reminder, if your loops continue to stay up, you need to push them down. If you don't, that is where you get those drop stitches on the end, which is very common when you're working with panels. And to cast off from the panel setting is simple. You're gonna take it out of your yarn guide here, and then you're going to knit one row, and you're gonna pick up the loops just like you normally would. So we have one loop, two loops, and then our third loop is kind of hiding, but it is here. And you just pull your yarn right through. And here is what our little strap made with the panel is gonna look like. And once you stretch it out, look at this. It looks just like this. And that is how you create a strap using the panel setting with your circular knitting machine.